Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy Stumps back for another OPTC video. And in today's video, we're doing our monthly legends tier list for OPTC Global, the first one of 2021. And um, if you guys didn't know, I do like to do these legends tier list at the end of the month, give the, give the game the most opportunity to get uh, all of the legends out for that particular month. So, with this particular month, we had two new additions, two very big additions that were Goldie Roger and Odin introduced into both versions of the game. Now, I'm not going to include the Halloween units, the Law, the Shanks, and the um, Mihawk in this particular tier list, as they're coming out in the next couple of days on OPTC Global. And by the time they're out and the time I can get this up, it's just not going to fall right in terms of the date. So, we will include them on the next one. But before I begin, I do want to give a huge shout out to OPTC tier list. If you guys want to create your own tier list, I will leave a link in the description below. Um, or if you do want to um, put, put up your own tier list, tag me um, on Discord or on Twitter. Feel free to do that as well. Also, huge shout out to um, the OPTC database for the images provided. Uh, big shout out to them. They're a big helpful source. I'll also link them in the description if you guys need help team building or anything like that. Go check them out as well. So, let's hop into the tier list today and... I am doing things a little bit differently. So, again, another thing before we begin is this tier list is my own personal opinion of how I rank units within OBTC Global playing the game for over about three years now. So, I am changing the way that I am doing my ranking. I am breaking down units into S tier captains, S tier subs, A tier captains, A tier subs, mainly support units, like you only really use them as supports. They're other ones where they see play, so very like niche characters. And then finally, we're going to leave characters in here that are basically just useless. So, um, we've got all the legends here. I have removed all of the V1s, pretty much all the V1s, except for the bullet there um, and this white bit here, I guess. Um, and I have re removed the Japan legends as well. So, let's have a look. So, time skip, Luffy doesn't really see too much play anymore. Um, this Lucy, Unevolved Lucy, can see some play. Um, he's still fairly decent. This Judge, still very, very good, definitely sees some play. Lace can definitely see some play, even though he has dropped off quite a lot. Shanks, V2 Shanks. I'm going to put V2 Shanks as an A tier sub. He's still really, really good for stuff like Kazuna. He has block orb removal. He also um, gives a very high attack boost to a specific color. He can also give a very high chain boost. He's excellent for like sugar teams and for Kazuna especially. So he's very, very good. I'm not going to try. I'm going to try and not touch on these units too much. As um, I do want to sort of fly through this, as there are a lot of legends we have to talk about. Um, Dofi can definitely see play, but he's not exactly amazing anymore. Akainu is probably, I would put in an AT captain. Uh, would I put in AT captain? With his limit break key, he's definitely an AT captain. But I don't know. He, he's kind of, he, he's probably here, like you could use him, just because there are a lot of better int super typings at the moment. So I feel like probably putting him here is probably the best option. Same with Kuzan. Kuzan's very, very good, but there are a lot of better Psy Captains. Um, you could probably put him as an A tier sub, to be honest. We might put them both there, just because their supports are still very, very good. And utilizing them as a sub could definitely, definitely work. But, I don't know, it's kind of like a C's play kind of thing there. But, they're still very, very good. I feel like they deserve to be higher than the C's, C's playlist. As they are definitely better than stuff like the Lace and the Dofi. Um, next, we have Original Tank Man. Definitely can see play with a 2 times attack boost, but... Honestly, like, he's borderline not used anymore, but he can definitely still see play. Same with this Katakuri. Katakuri's very, very good. He has that delay mechanic, but he's very, very niche again. So, I mean, he can, he's okay. Kung Fu Luffy, very, very good. 1.75 times attack boost to all types and colors. Um, he has um, orb manipulation to adjacent orbs. He has a threshold. He's really, really good. Um, I do know there's a YouTuber out there that does everything with Kung Fu Luffy, so he's definitely very, very good. Tessero, definitely an A tier sub, 3.25 times chain lock, as well as uh, orb manipulation for your captains in your bottom row. Very, very good for Kazuna, and he's an excellent rumble unit too. Um, Shiki is basically useless. Wako, I would put in A tier captain. Um, he is still very, very slow, but you just can't deny what Wako can still do. Even as a sub, he can be still very, very useful, but he's mainly used for very long pieces of content. So, look, it is what it is. Shiki's basically useless. Um, Brook. Honestly, Brook is an A tier sub. Straight up. Definitely. He gives you a full bottle of orbs. Um, basically, as long as you don't have block orbs. As he makes recovery and TND matching for your entire crew as a sub. 
He has a lot of healing. Um, he's really, really good. He's a really, really good unit, honestly. Um, he doesn't see too much play anymore, but he definitely can. And um, you can't deny like how good Brook actually is, even if you don't like him, I guess. Um, Beach honestly, doesn't see any play anymore, just because, like, shooters suck. Um, same with Zephyr. Carrot. Carrot's probably an A-tier captain, to be honest. Just because of what she can do. Um, she's super fast at clearing content. Um, and when you need to get through barriers, like, she's, she's your go-to. If you can beat something with Carrot, you're most likely going to use her. Um, uh, I might change this to mainly support and quality of life. Just to make, like, content easier, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, Katakuri, um, look, he can see play, but, like, with normal attacks only floating around, he's kind of like, ugh, you know? Bardo and Cavendish. I kind of want to put Bardo and Cavendish in as an S-tier sub. They do only boost Driven, which kind of hinders them, and that's why they probably deserve to be here. But just with their switchability alone, they can do a lot of hard content, like, a lot of really hard content, just on their switchability. And they can go on a lot of teams, being um, Dex and Quick, um, as well as um, Slasher and Striker. So, I'm going to leave them in STS sub, honestly. I use them quite a lot for stuff like Garth Challenges and stuff like that. So, they're very, very good. Jack, definitely quality of life legend. Doubling your XP, not much else you can say about him. Sabo is pretty good, but I mean, Fighters, Free Spirits, and Shooters. Shooters suck, to be honest, and... Free Spirits just have so many better options that he can see play, but, like, he doesn't really see see play. Um, Jumanji, definitely an AT captain with powerhouses being so good. Powerhouses have definitely dropped off significantly, but, um, it kind of just, it kind of sucks, to be honest, because, like, no one really runs them anymore. Cracker. Cracker would definitely be an S tier sub. Um, I don't use Cracker nearly as much as, like, I should, uh, but he's still really good, especially for stuff like Kazuna as well. Giving you a full board of orbs through block orbs. Um, and if you have the right captain class combination, you can get color affinity and the biggest chain boost in the game. For stuff like um, Legend Sugar Teams and stuff, like he's really good, especially for Kazuna. So he could probably fall into A tier sub just because he's like not used that often. But like for what you can use him for, is another like sort of big reason why I'm putting him in S, S sub. Same with like Bardo Cavendish. Um, honestly, the V2 slashes like they're borderline useless to be honest. Like. They can see play, but, like, no one's really running them. Um, Laffy, definitely an S-tier sub. Honestly, you could argue he's maybe an S-tier captain. Laffy's still really, really good. There's just characters that do what Laffy does better. And whenever I'm really running Laffy, I'm normally running him as a sub, purely because of that 2.5 times orb boost. So I think I'm going to stick him into S-tier sub right now, but you can't deny his captain ability, and if you want to argue it, you could put him in as an S-tier captain. Or an AT captain, but I feel like S tier sub is his perfect place, as that's where I mainly use Laffy. Big Mom, V2 Big Mom, definitely an S tier sub. 3.5 times chain lock, her switchability is incredible for clearing out mob characters in like early stages. And that stat buff, that um, extra stats, is really, really good. She's one of the only characters that does that. Sabo Koala, definitely an S tier sub, 100%. Same reason as Laffy, you could probably put them as an S tier captain. The downside to dual units are, though, like, when you're using them as captains, like, for example, Law's only a three times captain, and, like, it is just such a downside to when you are running, like, the earlier stages before you use their special. They're still a very good captain, but most of the time I'm using them as a sub, so I am going to put them as a sub. They're 1.5 times color affinity, they're 2.25 .2, times attack boost. Um, they're really, really strong. Really, really good unit. Uh, where are we? Neku and Inu, uh, I'd probably put them in C's play. Honestly, they're very, very good. Um, but there's just a lot of units that just sort of do what they do better. Uh, especially a lot of rare recruit units. Oh, VV Rebecca. VV Rebecca, if there's the top of this list in the S tier sub, VV Rebecca would be that. The only thing that lets this character down is their captain ability. Like, there's not, there is nothing else bad about this unit. Besides their captain ability. They're a color affinity captain, which makes them suck as a leader. Besides Kazuna, like, they are still actually pretty good in Kazuna as a leader. If you need, like, a dex or a strength leader. But as a sub, this is the best sub in the game right here. No no, no clap. Like, don't even at me. This is the best sub in the game. If you have a gold key, limit break key that unit. Um, Shirasheri. I would say Shirasheri is an ST sub. Oh, sorry, an AT sub. 
Um, their healing is very, very nice. Their switchability is very, very good. Getting rainbow orbs and that ability to get rainbow orbs is just exceptional. Exceptional. Um, where are we? Stampede Luffy, definitely an A-tier captain. Any character that has utility, and that leads me on to Ace as well, definitely an A-tier captain. Um, these two units are... Oh my gosh, can you just F off, bro? Please? So these two units both have utility in their in their kit. Um, but they don't really see that much play. Like, obviously shooters aren't great, so Halloween Ace's shooter side isn't really that prevalent. But the fighter side definitely is. But honestly, with Ace, he's definitely an AT captain. He's very underrated as a captain. But for my particular tier list here, I'm actually going to put Ace in mainly support. The reason I'm putting him here is, is because his support for three, uh, three turns of bind removal is godly. And I use him as a su like a support so goddamn much. So goddamn much. Where this Luffy removing Despair and removing Paralysis, I feel like is much more beneficial than what actually Ace provides with the Special Bind Reverse. Now, don't get me wrong. Ace, Ace if, you, if I did not have this tier, Ace would definitely be an A tier captain. But... Going off how I normally play the game and the way I use Ace, I'm always using him as a support on Luffy. And if I need the blind removal, I will find a way to make him the support and run a different team. A tier captain is Kaido. Another A tier captain, definitely Kaido. Whenever you can run Kaido that doesn't have normal attacks only, Kaido is your go-to, especially for quick content. Um, he's a bit of a brain-dead captain, so I don't like to run him too much, but you can't deny what he can do. Um... Especially with that NS Lobby event that we just had out on Global. Like, he just absolutely destroyed that. Um, downside to him, obviously, is normal attacks only. Um, next unit we have is Komarasaki. Uh, sorry, Onami. Definitely an A tier sub. Her conditional boost on defense down, setting defense to zero, is absolutely insane. She's basically an extra four times damage as you set the defense to zero, and then you get two times damage against that. Um, it's like two times times two times. So, she's really, really good. The downside to her is, obviously, if they have full immunity, it just absolutely shafts her. Komarasaki. Komarasaki is actually a very underrated unit. I would I would definitely put her up here around A tier captain. But there are a lot of characters that just definitely like do what she does, but better. She doesn't really provide too much besides her damage reduction, her healing, and her very like decent like attack buff. So for that, I want to put her in C's play. Like she can definitely C play. And she's definitely an underrated legend. She's probably one of the most underrated legends. Her and Halloween Ace, I think, are probably the two most underrated legends. But, in saying that, like, there are just units that just do what she does better. So, for that, I'm just going to put her in C's play. Uh, Chopper, definitely a quality of life legend. When, when Chopper gets his um, limit break key, he's actually going to be so god tier. Like, he's going to be so, so good. But, for now, double, dro double drops of cotton candy is basically all he's used for. And he's basically, yeah, quality of life. Luffy Taro Zora Juro. Honestly... I really want to put them in S tier sub. With slashes and free spirits just like absolutely roaming through content at the moment, these guys are very, very viable on a lot of teams. On Roger teams, on Odin teams, on a lot of free, like free spirits are just absolutely running right at the moment. And their switch ability is insane. To remove bind, despair, slot seal, and... I think it's something else. Is that it? Is it Bind, Despair, Slot Seal? That's the three, isn't it? Yeah. With that, with just with their switch ability is just insanely powerful, especially for stuff like Forest. This guy was an absolute goat for um, the Hawkins and the Kid Forest, and without his switch ability, most teams just don't function the way they do. So I want to put him as an S tier sub. He's definitely he's definitely an A tier captain. Like he can still get a lot of stuff done, and you can hybrid him up a lot. But the way I usually run this unit is definitely as a sub on a lot of very high-end teams like Shanks Crew teams, um, Roger teams, Odin teams, stuff like that. Next, we have Sobermask. Sobermask is definitely an S-tier sub. Not, not, not even a doubt about it. He is an absolute machine. His crewmate ability for the four turns of cooldown reduction after, is every time someone else uses a special is just godly. For Garp's challenges and for Kazuna, he's an absolute weapon. I'm using him at the moment on my quick team, and he just does so much work on the Kazuna. Um, Nami and Robin. I feel like Nami and Robin are probably an A-tier sub. They have a lot of very good paralysis removal, and they are very, very high orb boost, as well as a very high um, HP cutter. 
Um, and they usually are good go-to for stuff like Kazuna and stuff like that. In saying that, though, there are units that do what they do nicer, but when, like, the conditions are right for this unit, they are very, very good as a sub. As a leader, like, they're pretty good, like, especially for Dex and Int, but there's just a lot of characters that would do what they do better. And some of the other characters that you're going to see in the AT Captain slot are just way better than this unit. Pudding. S tier sub. Don't even at me. Shout out to Flamius. S tier sub for sure. N not, no one can do what Pudding can do. To be able to hold on to a special and then use it at a later day without tr like proccing a conditional of the enemy is insane. And it's what makes Roger like so good as a captain. So... She's an S tier sub. I don't use her that often, but I can definitely like I can definitely understand how powerful she actually is as a sub. As a leader, she's decent, I guess, for in. But um, her usability, like honestly, would put her here. But when the conditions are right and like for what you can do with like some teams, she's definitely an S tier sub, man. Like she's um she's actually god tier like in terms of subs. But in saying that, I don't use her as much as I should. But she can work very very well on Blackbeard teams, like very very well. Arlon Crew, A tier sub. Their switchability is really, really good. Really, really good. Um, they're very good at getting around special reverse, and they are a very high attack booster. Two times attack, up to 2.5 times attack, depending on your HP. Um, their captain ability sucks. That's why they don't even come close to A tier captain. But as a sub, they are very, very good. Ha. <laughs> Hello. How you doing, S tier captain? We have Shanks Crew. Definitely an S tier captain. If this character could be in both tiers, he would be. Um, but I feel like ST Captain is a bit above ST Sub. So, ST Captain, Shanks Crew, 3.5 times Chain Lock for 3 turns, 1.5 times Attack Boost, Jason Orbs, 1 on Switch Ability, does 10 turns of Special Seal, um, Reversal, if you have 2 of them, you just absolutely clap content. One of the best units in the game. They have Damage Reduction, what else, like, I don't have to say much else. Like, honestly, this is my favorite unit in the entire game. There is, besides Roger, there's no other unit that I like to run more. Mihawk Perona, definitely an S tier sub. Their switch ability is godly. When you can get their switch ability off of stuff like Kazuna and in hard pieces of content, um, getting around the uh, immunity buff with two or more enemies is just so goddamn strong, man. They have a 1.5k healing on their switch ability, 20% HP reduction, and give you a full border orbs, uh, sorry, change block orbs into matching. They are insanely good for a lot of teams. And um, even when they aren't boosted, they, they you can slot them on a team just for their switch ability. So, very similar to something like um, uh, Bardo and Cavendish, but just not to that sort of extent. Um, V3 Rally is basically useless. Kuzen. V3 Kuzen. I would have to say V3 Kuzen is an A tier sub. I hate this unit. Honestly, I dislike that unit a lot. Uh, I have my reasons. Go check out my summoning videos and you will understand why. But, you can't deny that a 2.25 times or boost for three separate colors and a 1.75 times color affinity isn't very, very strong. So, I am going to put him in A tier sub. I don't think he's as good as any of these subs up here, to be honest. He does provide two buffs, but I still don't think like he's as runnable as these particular characters up the top here. But, he is very, very good if you are running those three colors. As a captain, he has that chain buff mechanic, but, like, just... I just don't care, to be honest. V2 Snake Man, definitely an S tier captain. Um, five times captain when you have a strength or a meat orb to strength units. And then, uh, is it 3.75 times otherwise? Or is it four times otherwise? I think it's four times otherwise for strength units. But then it's 3.75 for every other color. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, his special is amazing. Full border orbs. Unfortunately, it's not through block orbs, but he can have some of the best subs in the entire game, some of the best supports in the entire game, as he's a rainbow captain, and Luffy just has just has a plethora of very good supports. He's super typing, giving a two times attack boost to entire crew. If you're basically just running a straw hat, is just insanely powerful as well. The fact that you can get around like interrupts because you are utilizing his super typing, and like he's just so good. Ah, uh, super type Sabo can see play. Honestly, like, I want to put him in AT sub, but, like, I never run this unit ever. Like, I, yeah. He just, S, he's just, he can see play if you choose to use him. Um, V3 Katakuri, definitely an AT captain for Int. Um, that goes the same for Blackbeard, actually. Let's put them both together. These two units together as the old school dream team combo works amazingly. For Kazuna, if you're versing a Psy unit, this is your go-to combo. This, this combo right here. 
you get the conditional, two times conditional boost, and the delay with Katakuri, and then you get the just crazy attacking potential that Blackbeard provides. Plus, they're both five times captains for ints. Like, they're so stupidly good. Katakuri has a two times attack boost as well, so he can see a little bit more play as a sub. But so can Blackbeard, honestly, with Blackbeard's amazing sailor ability, where he takes a shot, and it's in his captain ability too. He gets cooldown, which what makes him so goddamn strong to run. Same with Katakuri, but when you pair these two units up, it's disgusting. It's disgusting what these two units can do. Kid, A tier captain. Definitely an A tier captain. I would put Kid very closely with uh, Kaido. Um, I feel like Kaido is just like Kid, uh, sorry, Kid is just Kaido 2.0, but less brain dead. Um, when you can get his super typing off, he's very, very good as a five times captain for Dex. The big downside to this unit is that he's a Dex booster. Um, we are going to get V3 Zoro very soon on JP, so that is going to give a nice buff to Dex. But for the meantime, on especially on OPTC Global, Dex suck. Like, they are the worst color in the game. And I shouldn't say that they suck, but um, they're just not as good. So it is what it is. He's a lot of fun to use. Super Bomb Orbs, like, if there's a content where they just throw a bomb, I would tell you, like, kids, you go to guy. Um, he's a lot of fun, but, um, yeah, it just sort of is what it is. Hawkins can definitely see play if you want to use Hawkins. Um, honestly, like, I, if it was me, like, I don't have this unit, so I can't comment too much. I'd probably put him in never use, but he can clear a lot of hard content. And, you know, if you want to run Hawkins and you want to get Hawkins like, beat content with Hawkins, he definitely can do a lot of hard content. He's very similar to Sabo. Like, Sabo can do it if you have the right subs and that, and he can see play. But I feel like you just, you, you will want to have to use them. V3 Law. Definitely an S tier captain. This guy is a monster. And for those of you running Kazuna at the moment, you'll understand why. 4.5 times um, captain ability. When you have full HP, he has a lot of healing, a lot of damage reduction, has... Uh, a lot of access to some of the best subs in the game. Has one of the best special abilities in the game. He's basically Cracker 2.0. Like, he just does what Cracker does, but better. Honestly, he's just a better Cracker with an amazing um, captain ability. So, he can boost fighters, strikers, and free spirit units up to 4.5, four times otherwise. And you can hybrid this guy with a lot of very, very good units. Stuff like Super Type Boa, stuff like... Um, uh, Roger, Odin, V2 Snake Man. There's a lot of very, very good combos you can actually do. You can also just slap him on any particular team just for his amazing special ability, provided your captain has the two classes, like the, the a fighter, striker, shooter, slasher, and or, or and the driven free spirit powerhouse cerebral tag. So he works really, really well uh, in that regard. Um... He really doesn't have too many faults, to be honest. The only probably fault I have for him is, is that you have to be at full HP to get his max 4.5 times. And with switch abilities, that can be pretty tricky sometimes. But otherwise, like, I definitely can't fault this unit. Even when the power creep happens, he's just going to fall straight into S tier sub because he's just that goddamn good. Um, V3 Akainu. V3 Akainu is a funny one. Like, I want to put him as an S tier captain because he can just output so much damn damage. But I feel like... He's kind of dropped off a little bit. Um, he's a very good rumble unit. But he's kind of dropped off in the sense of... Running dual units is really hard with this guy. But if you have like V3 Kuzan as a sub for him... He can actually put in a lot of work. Like a lot of work. If you can get his 2 times defense conditional as well... He is godly. Like absolutely insane. 2.25 times attack to 3... 3 of like the like primary colors. And a conditional boost to 0 defense. When he's on, he's definitely an S-tier captain. But when he's not on, he's still very, very good. But without that extra conditional boost, he does drop off a bit. So what I'm actually going to do here, I'm actually going to drop him into S-tier sub. Now, the reason I'm going to put him in S-tier sub is because when you want to use the conditional boost, he's going to be the guy to go for. Mainly because he's like he's like Onami, right? But just better. Like, he's just better than Onami. So... I feel like S-tier sub's the perfect spot for him. He's still a very good captain. 4.5 times with a, with a color, uh, so with a matching orb, which is very easy to do. He provides a lot of matching orbs as well. He could definitely fall into the A-tier captain if you want, but I feel like the S-tier sub category is better than the A-tier captain. So um, I would definitely want to keep him as high as possible. But I feel like as S-tier captain, he's definitely dropped off compared to some of the other units that we're going to be seeing in that tier. Smoker. 
Smokey can see play. Um, honestly, like, he, he's probably higher, like, um, but I feel like, again, you just want to use Smoker when you are using him. The fact that he's only an attacker and all booster to quick kind of lets him down a lot, to be honest. Um, when you're running quick teams for stuff like Kazuna, he would be, like, up here. For Kazuna, you could probably say that he's up here somewhere. And honestly, like, if you compare him to something like Kid, the thing about, like, what makes Kid so much better is that Kid has the ability to run other colors. Like, I, I wouldn't say that Smoker is better than any of these units in this tier here. But I guess I would probably say that he's equal to these units here. So, we might put him as, like, A-tier sub. Um, but again, like, you kind of have to, like, look for a reason to use him. Rather than, like, actually wanting to use him. But he can be an attack booster. He can be an orb booster. So, I feel like he's probably better than most of the characters in C's play as well. So, let's put him in A-tier sub for now. Uh, I feel like that's a good spot for Smoker. Um, and yeah, we'll move on from there. Sugar... Definitely S tier captain. Absolute weapon. Absolute weapon. The fact that you can just make bears have a 4.5 times captain that just goes through barriers, burn, defensive effects, everything that isn't despair and stun, like, unless sugar, like, provided sugar isn't stun, is just absolutely insane. Her super typing is incredible because once you make bears, you can activate that. You get a 2.25 orb boost to characters of 40 or cost or less. And she's just, she's a weapon. Honestly, she's so good. And she's so fun to run. And again, she's like Law. When the power creep happens, she's just going to fall straight into S tier sub. Because running her as a sub is just as powerful as running her as a captain. I will not lie. Um, on to the next character now. We have Boa. Boa is going to be an S tier captain. When you can get her Mera Mera ability off, it is bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. And when you can't get her Mera Mera ability off, you have a five turn insane heal like an absolutely insane heal the downside to her is, is like without getting that mero mero ability she does fall off quite a lot but she can still provide a 2.5 times attack boost to her color and she can be partnered up with stuff like this guy right here v3 law and goldie roger she's just she's really really good she does have a rainbow boost in her as well which what's which is what makes her this high very similar to luffy actually i would put her very similar to luffy in the sense that i think luffy probably has a better super typing than she does but um why can't i put her up here there we go um she has a better super typing than luffy does for her color but luffy's super typing overall is probably better just because he is completely rainbow but i do sort of see very like similarities but if i had to put her in this tier list she would be at the back end oh my god the back end oh my gosh why tier list just let me put the character there all right, whatever. Fine, don't worry about it. I didn't want to do that anyway. All right. I would put her at the back end of this tier list. Mainly because um, without that Mero Mero ability fully proccing, she can see a lot of hindrance. But she's definitely never going to be used as a sub, really. Like, let's be real. And she's definitely better than all of these A-tier captains. So, I would 100% put her up here. Mainly because she is a rainbow captain as well. If she didn't have the rainbow tag, very similar to Blackbeard or Katakuri, she would definitely fall down here in A-tier. Oh, we're moving into the big boys now. Now we're moving into the big boys. Goldie Roger. The best character on OPTC Global right now. If there was a cat if there was another tier, he would sit here. This is where Roger should be. He should be the GOAT. He if you guys have seen my previous tier lists, Roger is the new GOAT. He is the best unit on OPTC Global at the moment. Three times up to a three times attack boost, five times captain when you use his special, four point five times rainbow otherwise. Ignores normal attacks only with his special, which is actually really, really strong. Like, I think people underrated that ability, especially in stuff like forests, where, like, you have, like, a mobs, and you just use his special, and you can just wipe, like, most of the mob units, and or do, like, a lot of damage to make your burst on a lot easier. He's just really, really good. Absolutely amazing unit. Um, he's completely immune to stuff like Despair, which makes him very, very viable, very similar to this Luffy. In the, why, in the reason why I put uh, Stampede Luffy so damn high. He has that same ability of just completely removing Despair. And I wish the tier list would just let me put them at the front. Why won't you let me put them... Just let me put it there. Oh, you know what? Screw you, tier list. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you. Um, but he's incredible. And that cut-in ability where he ignores like buff wipes or their Haki ability is just insanely godly. Oh, sorry, guys. Got to stay hydrated. Um, running a second one too and having two of that ability is just, it's something else, man. Honestly, it's something else. So he's definitely S tier. And if he was, if there was a high tier, he would be up there. 
Next is Odin. Odin, I'm going to put in S tier. Purely for the same reason as Boa. But if I had to put him in this tier, I would probably put him down here as well. Like, towards the end. Probably right between Boa and Law. I mean, I'd probably put Law higher, but... Um, the reason I've got him in, in the S tier is because he is way better than these A tier captains. Like, he's way better. As a sub, he would definitely be an S tier sub. Like, definitely be an S tier sub. But, as a captain, he's way better than all of these units. The only unit that comes close is maybe Laffy, Sabu Koala, and Luffy Zoro. And, the re and same with Sublimas. But the reason... Oh, you could probably say Mihawk Prona too. But the reason these guys are all in here is because you pretty much always want to use them as subs for their switch ability. And when they're not in their dual form, they, they don't have that much attack. Odin, on the other hand, is a 4.25 times rainbow captain all the time. 4.75 for strength if you have a Wano Orb. Wait, is it just strength? I think it's just strength. I might I might have to check that. But I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's, it, I know he has a 4.75 times captain ability when you have a Wano Orb. And obviously, he makes Wano Orbs from TND. And then he can generate Wano Orbs with his special. So if you have a full board of matching orbs, you can actually generate a full board of Wano Orbs, which gives you a 2.5 times extra attack boost on top of your regular um, matching orbs. They also cannot be manipulated or wiped, which is so powerful. It's very similar to Rainbow Orbs or Super Bomb Orbs. And because of that, I, I just have to put him in S tier. Like, he just has to. Yeah, it's a strength. If it's strength character, has a Wano Orb. So, um, he is a strength super typing, which sort of... I, don't, I wouldn't say it hinders him. Um, but I do like that his special does buff strength as well. So, if you don't know, his special is a 2.5 times orb boost for free spirit slashes and strength units. Very, very powerful. And his super typing can actually give him a 1 orb himself as well as a stat boost. So, well, something that we've got to mention about Roger is his super typing is amazing. Um, the ability to get a full board orbs and lock them through block orbs is just incredible. And some of the subs, like for his particular crew there's so many good units especially for this guy right here putting him on a roger team but the new dream team combo is actually these two right here roger and odin together is actually godly using odin as a sub on a roger team or hybriding them up as captains makes this 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 combo right here like it just makes them look like absolute doo-doo to be honest roger as a captain getting the full border orbs of these super typing and then using odin to lock them as one orbs and then using the Roger special to carry the orb buff into the next stage. This this combo, nothing beats this combo at the moment. In, in Pirate Rumble, in regular play, this combo right here is destroying everything. And it's destroying everything on JP as well. So it's a very, very good combo. Um, if you had like a Wombo combo tier, like these two here would rule that, that category. Like no clap, no doubt. Uh, as for the rest of the units here, I mean Whitebeard, no. Boa, no. Sabo, no. Usopp, I mean, you could probably put God Usopp here because he does have a guaranteed delay. And if you pair him up with this guy here in um, Kazuna, you could definitely see some play there. So, I mean, we could put him in C's play, I guess. Like, I mean, all units could probably see play, I guess, really. But um, it depends on, like, how much play they get and compared to other rare recruits. Um, this Luffy has a really good support. Um, amazing support of making uh, orbs matching. Very, very strong. This Rayleigh, absolute monster support unit. Very, very, very good uh, support unit. But, look, he would either fit in mainly support or in S tier sub. I'm actually going to put him up in S tier sub because I use him so, so much. Five turns of bind. No, it's like, is it five or seven? Is it five or seven? Either way, I know he does Bind, Despair, and Paralysis Removal. And then he makes Perfects easiest to hit. He is an int unit as well, which means that he can go on a lot of very good teams like the Blackbeard and Katakuri team. Uh, and he's basically like their go-to um, utility. But he also has the Sailor ability when another unit uses a special. He gets two turns of cooldown, which is very, very good. Yeah, it's seven turns. Sorry, he does Bind, Despair, and Paralysis by seven turns, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Actually, it's insane. Um, and then he has pinch healing, uh, critical hit. He's very, very good. And that sailor ability where he, yeah, he gets two turns of cooldown every time someone else uses a special. So he's an amazing sub for wherever you can fit him on. 
if you need those three like utility you're always going to run this unit but mainly i use him as a support uh, on luffy he reduces two turns of blind despair or paralysis only on luffy's but whenever like that is very very good if you get five turns of something with sockets and this guy's a support you can get rid of them very very easily and there's a lot of good luffy's in the game if you look around there's a lot of good luffy's but he definitely deserves to be an s tier sub uh purely for his uh crewmate ability all right where are we at luchi knows doo shanks doesn't see play at all this kuzan i guess can see play but not really ace no sengoku no horty no v1 mihawk no zoro no this law still really really good i guess like a two point uh two five times all boost to cerebrals is very very strong this is a good rumble unit i guess too which is great but the reason i'm going to put him on the list is because his support is insane he's a 1.75 times all boost to all units on a corazon and corazon when we get to him we're going to talk about him in a second is very very good like very very good so this law excellent excellent unit as a support in niche pieces of content but when you are running corazon most of the time you're going to have him as a support uh bardo definitely going to go in the quality of life and support um his support on robin to remove three turns of paralysis is godly um exceptional support ability especially for stuff like garb's challenges for dofi one he was an absolute monster on no robbie um where we at uh v1 law no croc no kazaru no buggies definitely a quality of life legend getting those double double drops very very handy very very nice jimbei i want to put jimbei s tier sub but i just feel like i don't use him as much as i used to use him there's a lot of units that like rare that do what he does but better so i'm actually going to probably drop drop him down from my last tier list into a tier sub he's still really good five turns of damage reduction and uh, defense up removal and a full board of orbs of fighters. He he can still see play, a lot of play actually. But most of the time when I'm running that defense removal, I'm always wanting to have all three of them the threshold as well. So I mean he's an A tier sub for sure. I'd actually probably say he's more useful than most of these subs to be honest. But um, there's a lot of rare recruits that can kind of just do what he does now, I guess. Um, six plus judge still very very good. Can definitely see some play, but like isn't amazing. Uh, Magellan. Honestly, Magellan can definitely see some play. If you can poison enemies, um, it is a, it is a mechanic that is very, very underrated. Especially for getting stuff around, around stuff like resilience. But, in saying that, this Magellan doesn't see too much play at all. He's got a very good sub in terms of stat boosting, actually. But, I mean, no one really uses him in actual gameplay, I suppose. Um, so, we'll put him in C's play, just because you can. Very similar to, like, Hawkins. I mean, if you want to run him, you can. But lots of people just don't. You can also use the um, support of... What's his name? Mr. Two. Is it Mr. Two? No, Hannibal. Um, to get a conditional boosting as poison. So that, that combo works really, really well. Corazon! My boy, Corazon is definitely an S-tier sub. This unit is one of my favorite units to run. And has been for a very, very long time. As he is very, very good. Um, he has basically three turns of... Um, utility across the board on like every single debuff and has an amazing sailor release with paralysis and special blind by one turn he's a godly unit on um forests and stuff like that and he also has an insane support ability so you could either put him in like mainly supports because on someone like this guy here v3 law he's an absolute weapon but in actual content he's an absolutely insane sub as well i'd actually put him up here with vv rebecca in terms of usefulness, I actually highly recommend Limit Break keying this guy, as he does get three turns of um, special cooldown as well, which is really, really strong. Uh, six plus Sanji can definitely go into quality of life in terms of um, supports. He's got a very, very good support for someone like Onami, which can really help out Sugar. So I'm going to put him in a very good support. He's um, he's decent, but he's just a character like you're not really going to be using too often. Enel does not see play anymore. Frankie, you could definitely see play. Very similar to this Tank Man, to be honest. That Frankie and this Tank Man combo back in the day was actually really, really strong. Um, I guess it'll work, but like it's like whatever. Um, Cavendish. Cavendish's support's really, really good. Attaches to any quick character. Gives them a 1.75 times orb and attack boost. Locks that orb can be really, really strong on, like, characters like Bobbins and Utility characters for, like, blitzing through, like, Stage 4 of Colosseums and stuff. So, definitely a very, very good support. 
Dogstorm uh, doesn't see any play anymore. This Neko has a really good support. Removes two turns of bind and two turns of attack down and can go on characters like Chopper. So when you're running like a, a Chopper team for like Cotton Candy and you need to get around like attack down or bind, you can just slap this Neko on and it just works really, really well. Like really, really well. That way you can just save yourself a slot for utility and you don't have to worry about that. Um, Rob Lucci, no. Rob Lucci's got a color affinity for shooters. So I guess we'll put him in good support, but like no one runs shooters, I guess. Uh, V1 Snake Man. Oh god, I want to put him up here so bad. I really want to put him up here so bad. I think I will, to be honest. V1 Snake Man can still get shit done. That's the bottom line. Um, he's a two times orb, like a two turn orb booster. He's a very short cooldown. He's a powerhouse free uh, fighter unit. So he's got very, very good classes. Um. He can be hybrided up with a lot of good units. The downside is his multiply is a little bit low. So I would probably put him down here, um, to be honest. But in saying that, I would much rather run him than pretty much most of these A-tier captains in most scenarios. But I feel like he deserves to be down an A-tier captain just because of the power creep. Um, I don't think he's that much better than stuff like um, Stampede Luffy. Um, but... If you look at some of these other legends, if you don't if you don't have V2 Snake Man and you need to run like V2 Snake Man for something, you just hybrid him up with this guy and it works really, really well. Roger, Odin, same boat. Shanks crew, same boat. Because he's a rainbow captain, he can just work so well. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put him into S tier sub because he's... Let's be real. He's better than these A tier captains. He's definitely better than these A tier captains and he's definitely better than stuff like Bardo Cavendish. Um, he's definitely better than stuff like um, Pudding. So let's put him in... Let's put him in S tier sub. He's definitely not better than Corazon. He's definitely not better than... Viva Rebecca. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good order, I guess. Like, this is this is not in order, too, by the way. I've just got, like, my... The, like, the first slots of, like, the ones we're talking about. So, don't think this is in order. I'm just having a bit of fun with it. Um, V2, V1 Dofi 6 Plus. Unless we're talking about Rumble, it's just... No. V1 Big Mom, no. Um, a kind... Uh, a, sorry, what, what's his name? Fuji. Definitely no. This Akainu, though, definitely has a very, very good support, especially for stuff like um, when you have interrupts where you can't use attack boosts. 1.5 times attack to strength is very, very good when you do a damage dealing special, so he can definitely um, be very, very useful as a support a support unit. And he's not he's not terrible. Like, let's be real, he's not terrible. Uh, this Nami, definitely an A tier sub. Her, she gives color affinity and orb boosts. She's the Nami unit. Like, she's... She's really, really good. There is a lot of characters that do what she does, but they're better. But she's still very, very handy. Uh, let's move on now. We've got Shirahoshi. I feel like you have to put Shirahoshi in A tier sub. Like, you just can't deny what she does. She's an, an absolutely monster healer. She gives rainbow orbs, full water rainbow orbs. Obviously, you can't, like, get rid of those. And if you have a locking mechanic, like, with Roger or something like that, you can just hang on to them. She just bypasses a lot of really annoying abilities. Um, so, I, I feel like she just has to go into A tier sub. Um, but how much play she sees is, is another story, I guess. Uh, Bullet. Bullet is definitely an S tier captain. Straight up. He is absolutely monstrous. He is a 4.75 times captain ability to himself that's super effective against all types. And he can be partnered up with a lot of very, very good legends as he is a color captain for quick strength and int. His special is very, very good if you don't have normal attacks only. And even if you do, just that super effective against all types just means that you can now put so much damage. With the new Kaido that's coming out on JP, I'm really interested to see what this guy can do, to be honest. Hybriding those two up is going to be really interesting. Or using Kaido as a support on a bullet team. It's it's going to be pretty nutty. Um, We've got our boy Lucy 6+. Plus. Lucy 6+, plus, AT captain. Um, he's got a very, very good special being an attack booster for two turns for three colors. Um, he's a color captain. He can be hybrided up with a lot of very, very good units. Definitely an A tier captain. He definitely would not fall anywhere lower than that. Uh, V1 Katakuri 6 plus is definitely an A tier cap, uh, A tier captain. He's, um, he's so much fun, man. Especially with, if you've got his limit break key as well, like you're laughing all the way to the bank. He's so good when you limit break key him, but he is exceptional. That delay mechanic, the the sort of the intricacy of that delay mechanic is so much fun to play with. And I love running this unit. He runs on like what four different classes, but you need to be like both of those classes. I think it's like or five classes. It's like striker driven, fighter. No, not fighter, powerhouse. I think it's like free spirit, 
Fighter and Slash are the only ones that aren't boosted. I have to double check that though, but he just does a tap timing bonus. He does conditional against delay. He's just really, really good. Plus, he's an in unit, so you can hybrid him up with like some of these guys here. Uh, just really, really strong. Robin, uh, she's a cerebral unit, I guess, which is kind of cool, but like, again, you're just never really using her in regular play. Actually, this Dofi has a really good support now that I'm looking, thinking about it. 1.75 times all boost to Driven. If Driven ever make like a, cr a creepy comeback, um, this, this Dofi is really going to be really, really good for a all boost, getting around um, the mechanics where you can't use all boosts, mainly for stuff like this guy here, because Bullet's a Driven unit. That just sort of triggered that. Um, Marco can see play, I guess. Uh, I feel like you could probably say the same as Robin. Uh, she's a cerebral two times uh, attack booster, but I mean, you're only really using these units if you really want to. Probably the same with V1 Law because of like his mechanic of going through barriers. I guess you could say the same thing about um, Mihawk um, being able to like deal a butt ton of damage on, on a res. Um, I guess you like V3 Rally. I don't like V3 Rally, but like when, when he works, he works, I guess. V1 Kuzan, same argument. Like extending that attack and all buff can be very, very handy, but it isn't essential. So we'll just slap them there for now. Everyone else is just very, very old, and I just never use them. I, at least, like, I can find uses for these particular characters here. Um, Quickbeard. I would probably say Quickbeard is an AT captain. The problem with Quickbeard is, is he's at. Well. Whoop. The problem with Quickbeard is, is you have a character like this running around. Um, and when you've got, no, like, no normal attacks only, you're always going to pick Kaido over Quickbeard, to be honest. And Quickbeard always just sort of ends up being a sub for Kaido. But in saying that, you can't deny what this guy can do, especially with his key limit break. He can just put he can just put in monster work. But the way I normally use him is actually as a support. The main reason I use him as a support is he does four turns of despair removal on... Oh, no, three turns of despair removal on an ace character. And there are a lot of really good aces. And I think on White... Um, I'm sorry, on Marco as well. So you can find a lot of uses for him there. And he's very, very good. Um, Garp. This Garp... Oh, I feel like... Is he an S tier sub? I don't know. Oh, it's a tricky one. He's definitely better than all the A tier subs. And I feel like you could probably put him in A tier captain. Most of the time you are running this guy as a sub. But... Like... He's got a very, very good captain ability now. Like, a very, very good captain ability. Up to a, what, 4 point... I think it's up to a 4.5 times multiplier if you hit good guy to perfect. And then he's a chain locker, which helps that out on a very low cooldown. He can he can be very, very viable. He's got special bind removal. He's also got a very good support as well for um, Kuzan units that you can slap on there to get three turns of special bind removal. But I feel like I just... I always use this guy as a sub whenever I do. And... For that reason, I kind of want to put him up here in S tier sub, to be honest. But I just don't think he's as good as the, the, the characters in that tier, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. He's got a very good captain ability. He's probably got a better captain ability than, say, Bardo Cavendish. But, like, Bardo Cavendish's, like, help on the teams that they're on is just, like, way better than what Garp can provide, as no one can really do what Bardo Cavendish can do every single turn. All right, we're coming down to the last two units now. V2, 6 plus Rayleigh. Uh, he's probably an A tier sub. He's got very, very good orb manipulation, damage reduction, orb boost. When he's on, he's on. But he's just not really there in terms of the S tier subs. Because I would much rather use this Rayleigh for utility. But in saying that, he can trigger these guys super typing. So um, there is that as well. And if you are on a Roger team and you need an orb booster, he can be your go-to guy. Downside to him is his name's Rayleigh, to be honest, as well. Like, there are just a lot of really good Rayleigh's in the game now. This Rayleigh especially, and the Rare Recruit Rayleigh that just came out with the Roger Batch. They're just much, much better options to go for. Finally, we've got Jinbei. I'm going to leave Jinbei right there, because, like, let's be real. Who's using Jinbei, to be honest? Um, I look, I feel like I'm disrespecting the Slashes, so let's let's put those Slashes right there. Mainly because Slashes, I think, have probably two of the, like, they probably have, like, some of the best units in the game. But, like, no one, like, no one runs a Slash team, you know? Everyone's running those, like, crazy rainbow teams, but that just built up of slashes. So, I think that's going to wrap this one up. The first tier list of 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed the new format. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm sorry that this one was a very long video, but I hope you put your seatbelt on, got yourself some popcorn, and buckled on down. Um, but thanks for hanging around for all those guys that did hang around to the end. So, 
If you guys did enjoy this one, make sure to belt that like button. And if you want to stay up to date with more OPTC content I post, hit that big red subscribe button too. But guys, most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day. As always, guys, I thank you for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.